we're going to talk about sleep. Now, chronic insomnia may be classified as primary idiopathic as a lifelong difficulty in initiating and maintaining sleep, resulting in poor daytime functioning. Secondary, which is comorbid, insomnia due to a psychiatric illness, a medical condition, medications, or substance abuse. The diagnosis of primary insomnia occurs after medical, neurological, and psychiatric causes have been excluded. The cause of primary insomnia is not known. Certain individuals may be predisposed or may have built-in psychologic traits that make them vulnerable to development of insomnia. Once chronic insomnia has manifested, symptoms are likely to persist over time. Individuals may engage in behaviors that perpetuate disturbed sleep by keeping irregular sleep-wake schedules, using over-the-counter medications or alcohol as sleep aids, and spending more time in bed trying to sleep. Benzodiazepine receptor agonists such as Zolpidem work quickly and should be taken immediately before bedtime. More than 70 million people in the United States have a sleep disorder and many are unaware that they have a problem. The National Sleep Foundation surveys consistently find that nearly 50% of adults 18 to 64 years of age report daytime sleepiness so severe that it interferes with work and social functioning at least a few days each month. Untreated sleep disorders pose considerable health and economic consequences. According to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, 100,000 accidents and 1,500 traffic fatalities each year are related to driving while drowsy. Over a lifespan of 70 years, an average individual will spend approximately 20 to 25 years of sleep. Both behavior and physiologic functions are influenced by sleep. Some of these include memory, mood, cognitive function, hormone secretion, glucose metabolism, immune function, body temperature, and renal function. On average, Americans sleep approximately six and a half hours on work days and seven and a half hours on non-work days. The 16% of Americans who sleep less than six hours per night report more difficulty getting to sleep and lower sleep quality. Conditions that result in poor sleep quality include insomnia, restless leg syndrome, obstructive sleep apnea, and sleepwalking. Sleep-wake cycle. No single neuronal structure regulates sleep and waking. Rather, it's a complex arrangement of structures that control these behaviors. Key nuclei in the brainstem, hypothalamus and thalamus, are involved in the regulation of sleep and wake behaviors. Various neurotransmitters, glutamate, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, dopamine, histamine, serotonin, are involved in wake behavior. The sedating properties of many over-the-counter medications resulting from inhibiting one of these arousal systems, especially acetylcholine and histamine. Sleep-promoting neurotransmitters and peptides include melatonin, adenosine, somatostatin, growth hormone-releasing hormone, delta sleep-inducing peptides, prostaglandins, pro-inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6. Our circadian rhythms managed by the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus, synchronized by environmental light and dark periods. Light can be used as therapy to shift the timing of the sleep-wake rhythm. For example, bright light used early in the morning will cause the sleep-wake rhythm to move to an earlier time. Bright light used in the evening will cause the sleep-wake rhythm to move to a later time. This picture lists the effects of sleep deprivation and sleep disorders on the body. In patients with chronic illness, especially cardiovascular disease and stroke, sleep disorders are directly associated with increased mortality and morbidity. Sleep loss is associated with decreased immune function and body temperature and with endocrine changes, including a decrease in growth hormone levels. Impaired cognitive function and performance on simple behavioral tasks occur within 24 hours of sleep loss. An insufficient amount of nighttime sleep has a harmful impact on carbohydrate metabolism and endocrine function. Individuals who report getting less than six hours of sleep a night have a higher body mass index and are more likely to be obese. NREM stage one occurs at the beginning of sleep with slow eye movements and is a transition phase from wakefulness to sleep. It is short in duration lasting one to seven minutes. The person can be easily awakened. Stage two is a period of sound sleep. The heart rate slows down and the body temperature drops. This stage lasts 10 to 25 minutes. Stage three is a deep sleep or slow wake sleep. It is the deepest stage of sleep and this stage lasts 20 to 40 minutes. 
Dreaming is more common in this stage than in other stages of NREM sleep, although it is not as common as in REM sleep. REM sleep is thought to be important for memory consolidation and is the period when the most vivid dreams occur. Daytime consequences of insomnia may manifest as feeling tired, having trouble concentrating at work or school, exhibiting altered mood, and falling asleep during the day. Behavioral manifestations of poor sleep include irritability, forgetfulness, confusion, difficulty staying awake during the day, and anxiety. Difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, waking up too early, or poor sleep quality. Acute insomnia, the symptoms for at least three nights a week over a two-week period. Chronic insomnia, nighttime and daytime symptoms for one month or longer. Daytime complaints associated with chronic insomnia include fatigue, poor concentration, and interference with social or family activities. Compared with married individuals, insomnia is higher in divorced, widowed, and separated individuals and in those with low socioeconomic status and less education. Aggravated by inadequate sleep hygiene are like stimulants, medications, using alcohol to induce sleep, irregular sleep schedules, nightmares, exercise near bedtime, and jet lag. In an ICU, lowering the level of light will help mimic normal day-night patterns and maximize the opportunity for sleep. Although frequent assessments and opioid use can disturb sleep patterns, these actions are necessary for the care of critically ill patients. For some patients, having a family member or friend at the bedside may decrease anxiety and improve sleep. Assessment is needed first to choose appropriate interventions to improve the patient's sleep. It's diagnosed through self-report. The diagnosis of insomnia is made on the basis of subjective complaints and evaluation of a one- or two-week sleep diary completed by the patient. In the ambulatory care setting, the evaluation of insomnia requires a comprehensive sleep history to establish the type of insomnia and to screen for possible psychiatric, medical, or sleep disorder comorbidities that would require specific treatment. Actigraphy. A small actigraph watch can be worn on the wrist to measure gross motor activity. The unit continually records movement. Actigraphy and polysonography studies and sleep studies may be used for determining specific sleep disorders, but are not necessary to make an initial insomnia diagnosis. Polysonography is done only when symptoms or signs of a sleep disorder, such as sleep disorder breathing, are evident. A regular evening schedule is recommended to improve sleep time and quality. Aerobic exercise may improve sleep quality, but should occur at least six hours before bedtime. Reading in bed is discouraged for patients with insomnia. The bedroom temperature should be slightly cool. A sleep history should involve characteristics of sleep such as duration and pattern of sleep and daytime alertness. Before any questionnaire is used, the patient's cognitive function, reading level, if a paper form is used, and language are assessed. It is important to note the sleep aid medication dose and frequency of use as well as any side effects such as daytime drowsiness or dry mouth. Many individuals also consume herbal or dietary supplements to improve sleep including valerian, melatonin, hops, lavender, passionflower, kava kava, and skullcap. Should be first line of therapy. The complementary and alternative therapies for insomnia include relaxation training, guided imagery, cognitive strategies to address dysfunctional ideas about sleep, and behavioral strategies that target an individual's poor sleep habits. Many individuals with insomnia become used to taking over-the-counter or prescription medications to treat insomnia and risk becoming dependent upon them both psychologically and physically. Rebound insomnia is common with abrupt withdrawal of hypnotic medications. Mechanically ventilated patients have abnormal sleep architecture with a short REM stage and increased fragmentation. Adequate pain management improves the duration and quality of sleep, but medications commonly used to relieve pain, especially opioids, also alter sleep and place the individual at risk for sleep disordered breathing. So we look at the nursing diagnosis, like insomnia, sleep deprivation, disturbed sleep pattern, readiness for enhanced sleep. The nursing implementation is to assume primary role in teaching sleep hygiene, reduce the light and the noise, teach the patient about sleep medications. Although education about sleep hygiene practices is beneficial, 
Individuals with chronic insomnia will require in-depth training in cognitive behavioral strategies. Awareness of time passing and watching the clock add to anxieties about not falling asleep or returning to sleep. With benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepines, and melatonin agonists, the patient is taught to take the drug right before bedtime to be prepared to get a full night's sleep of at least six to eight hours and to not plan activities the next morning that require highly skilled psychomotor coordination. When taking these agents, the patient should avoid high-fat foods that can alter the drug absorption. Narcolepsy. Unwanted episodes of REM sleep occur throughout the day in patients with narcolepsy. These naps are usually a short duration but can last for longer than an hour and patients feel refreshed afterwards. Patients may complain of feeling drowsy and unable to remain awake while watching a movie, sitting in a classroom, reading, or performing other sedentary activities. As a result, they often show poor performance at work, have reduced quality of life, and are disabled with poor interpersonal relationships. Narcolepsy is diagnosed on the basis of a history of sleepiness, polysonogram, and daytime multiple sleep latency tests caused by the brain's inability to regulate sleep-wake cycles normally. Causes fleeting urges to sleep, which may cause individual to fall asleep. Two categories, with and without cataplexy. Narcolepsy affects both men and women. The onset of narcolepsy typically occurs in adolescence or early in the third decade. However, approximately 25% of patients are not diagnosed until after 40 years of age. Head trauma and sudden change in sleep-wake habits and infection may trigger the onset of narcolepsy symptoms. Cataplexy is a brief and sudden loss of skeletal muscle tone or muscle weakness. It can manifest as a brief episode of muscle weakness or as complete postural collapse and falling to the ground. Laughter, anger, or surprise often triggers the episodes. Approximately 30 to 50% of patients with narcolepsy experience cataplexy. Amphetamine drugs such as dextramphetamine, dexedrine, or methamphetamine, desoxin, and methylphenidate, concerta, are used to manage daytime sleepiness. A non-amphetamine weight promotion drug, monophenol or provigal, is considered a first-line drug th therapy. Tricyclic antidepressants such as atomexetine, stratera, or protriptyline, vivactyl, and despramamine, norpramine, are effective in the management of cataplexy. Who comes up with these names? The accident rate for patients with narcolepsy who are receiving appropriate treatment is similar to the general population. Stimulant medications are used on an ongoing basis for patients with narcolepsy. The purpose of antidepressant drugs in the treatment of narcolepsy is the management of cataplexy, not to treat depression. Changes in sleep hygiene are recommended for patients with narcolepsy to improve their sleep quality. Circadian rhythm disorders. Jet lag disorders occurs when an individual travels results in the crossing of multiple time zones and one's body time is not synchronized with environmental time. The number of time zones crossed affects the severity of the symptoms and the time it takes to recover. Short on-site naps will improve alertness and rotating shifts causes the most disruption in sleep habits. The picture shows how sleep apnea occurs. So when A, the patient predisposed to obstructive sleep apnea has a small pharyngeal airway. And B, during the sleep, the pharyngeal muscles relax, allowing the airway to close. And the lack of airflow results in repeated apneic episodes. And then in C, with CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure splits the airway open, preventing airway obstruction. Also called obstructive sleep apnea hypoapnea syndrome partial or complete upper airway obstruction during sleep. The apneic period may include hypoxemia and hypercapnia. Obstruction may last from 10 to 90 seconds. Apnea and arousal cycles occur repeatedly, as many as 200 to 400 times during 6 to 8 hours of sleep. Sleep apnea occurs in 2 to 10 percent of the population, but is considered to be underreported. The risk increases with obesity age greater than 65 years, neck circumference greater than 17 inches, craniofacial abnormalities that affect the upper airway and acromegaly. Smokers are more likely to have obstructive sleep apnea and is more common in men than in women until after menopause when the prevalence of the disorder is the same in both genders.
Women with obstructive sleep apnea have higher mortality rates. The patient's bed partner may complain that the patient's loud snoring and the snoring may be so disruptive that both persons cannot sleep in the same room. Complications can result in cardiac changes, poor concentration of memory, impotence, depression, and diagnosis is based on a polysonogram. Complications that can result from untreated sleep apnea include hypertension, right-sided heart failure from pulmonary hypertension caused by chronic nocturnal hypoxemia and cardiac dysrhythmias. During a polysonogram, the patient's chest and abdominal movement, oral airflow, nasal airflow, and pulse oximetry, ocular movement, and heart rate rhythm are monitored. A diagnosis of sleep apnea requires documentation of apneic events, or no airflow with respiratory effort, or hypopnea, airflow diminished 30 to 50 percent with respiratory effort, or at least 10 seconds duration. Body mass index and snoring suggest possible sleep apnea, which can cause complications such as the cardiac dysrhythmias, hypertension, and right-sided heart failure. Oral appliances bring the mandible and the tongue forward to enlarge the airway space, thereby preventing airway occlusion. With CPAP, the blower is adjusted to maintain sufficient positive pressure, 5 to 25 centimeters of water, in the airway during inspiration and expiration to prevent airway collapse. For patients who are not compliant with CPAP treatment, interventions such as guided troubleshooting with equipment and problem solving are helpful strategies to reduce anxiety and enhance adherence to CPAP treatment. For those with difficulty with CPAP, BiPAP can deliver a higher inspiration pressure and a lower pressure during expiration. CPAP is very effective in reducing sleep apnea, but compliance is frequently a problem. Surgery, radiofrequency ablation, or a follow-up polysonogram study may be indicated, but a nurse should always assess whether the CPAP is being used as prescribed. Sometimes abdominal, oral, and nasal movement accompanies the periodic limb movement disorder. Movements typically occur for 5 to 10 seconds in intervals separated by 5 to 90 seconds. Periodic limb movement disorder and restless leg syndrome often occur simultaneously, but they are distinct disorders. Dopaminergic drugs, Mirapex, and Requip are the preferred treatments. Gerontological considerations. Even healthy elderly who do not complain of sleep disturbance have evidence of fragmented sleep, nocturnal wakefulness, and reduced sleep efficiency when studied with a polysonogram. Older adults may attribute their disturbed sleep to normal aging. A common misconception is that older people need less sleep than younger people. Awakening to use the bathroom during the night increases the risk for falls. Medications used by older adults can contribute to sleep problems. Because older adults may not talk about sleep problems, a sleeping assessment should be performed. Cough and cold medications, especially those containing pseudoephedrine, caffeine-containing drugs, which is a combination of acetaminophen, and drugs containing nicotine, like nicotine gum, transdermal patches, they're stimulants. Diphenhydramine alone or in combination with other drugs is sedating with anticholinergic effects. Any over-the-counter medication labeled PM likely has diphenhydramine and should also be used cautiously by older adults. Drug therapies are challenging with older adults. We really need to avoid long-acting benzodiazepines. Hypnotics should be used briefly. All drugs for sleep disturbances are started at a lower dose and are monitored carefully. Older adults receiving benzodiazepines are at increased risk of daytime sedation, falls, and cognitive and psychomotor impairment. Parasomnias. Enuresis, which is bedwetting, hallucinations, and eating occur during REM sleep. In the ICU, a parasomnia may be misinterpreted as ICU psychosis. In addition, sedated ICU patients can exhibit manifestations of a parasomnia. Nightmares are commonly reported by patients in the ICU and are probably side effects of medications in that REM sleep is often absent in critically ill patients. The longer the stay in the ICU, the more likely the patient is having nightmares. Sleep needs of nurses. Nurses on rotating shifts get the least amount of sleep. Poor sleep is the strongest predictor of chronic fatigue in nurses doing shift work. For night shift work, scheduling the sleep period just before going to work increases alertness and vigilance, improves reaction time, and decreases accidents during night shift work. 
Nurses who have control over their work schedules appear to experience less sleep disruption than those whose schedule is imposed.